Hello and welcome to this video on using object-oriented programming in JavaScript. If you recall on the last lesson that we have, and if you didn't take the lesson previous to this one, you should do so so you understand what's going on here. We used a, a, a website, a web page, uh, that was uh, attached to a separate JavaScript file that contained a class in it. And what we could do is that we could make uh, some rectangles on two different canvases or two different canvi using some relatively simple code. And if you recall, the code that we used looked like this. Uh, All we had to do was have a have a uh, an object definition uh, right here, an identifier which we called RECT1. This could be any legal identifier. And we're making a new rec, rec class from it. And this is the class definition. This right here is the class definition that was that is contained in this external JavaScript document right here, which is the one that you see. If I move this guy here, it's the one that you see right here. So this document here, which is this guy, is now being attached to this document right here, which is what you're going to see what the code looks like. And the reason why we did that is that it really simplified the coding of what we had to do. We didn't have to go through the the old coding of making a rectangle, which was uh, you know document uh, get dot get element by ID, and then uh, uh, we had to get the context uh, 2D, and then the rectangle, and then the fill style and then the uh, x and y coordinates and height and width. It, it was much easier to do it this way. Okay, so as promised, here is the code in the uh, rectangle class JavaScript, the JavaScript document that was attached to this. And if you look at this code, what you see here are basically what looks like two separate functions. The function, main function up here is called rec class. And if we come back here, we see that's what we called. We called rec class, okay? And then we have another function here, which is draw. And if we look at where did we use draw, we use draw right here, rec class. We use that uh, with the dot operator that made it draw this stuff. So if you just want to copy this code, and then paste it into a rectangle class dot JavaScript and then attach it uh, to your HTML document, then you can use the simplified code as well. So if you want to learn more about uh, object-oriented programming, especially in JavaScript, then you need to watch the rest of this video tutorial, uh, which is rather tedious, by the way. And if you don't want to learn more about it, you can stop the video here because the rest is going to be fairly detailed stuff about object-oriented programming. Okay, here we go, the second part of the video. Let's look at a definition of object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm using objects, which is data structures consisting of data fields and methods together with their interactions. Okay? with data fields and methods together with their interactions. Let's see what that is. This is a data field. This is simply holding data and giving some initial values to the data. To see how they interact, this one here allows the interaction of this stuff. Like for example, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, they're gonna interact in order to place uh, these rectangles a certain, a certain place. So if we look at the definition of object-oriented programming, it's data fields and methods together with their interactions. So this is the data field. This is the method. Okay. Now, programming techniques may include features such as data abstraction, which we'll talk about, encapsulation, messaging, modularity, polymorphism, and inheritance. Many modern programming languages now support OOP, at least as an option. So we're going to define what some of these terms mean 
and the reason why you need to know these is because this terminology is used to help explain uh, techniques in object-oriented programming. Now let's look at a class. What's a class? Uh, well, let me scan down here so you can see it. I just scanned it back up. In object-oriented programming, a class is a construct that is used as a blueprint to create instances of itself. A construct. This is the construct right here, this whole thing. Used as a blueprint. Okay, it's being used as a blueprint. To do what? To create instances of itself. So I look here. This is the instance of this blueprint. If I look here, here's another instance of the same blueprint. Okay, so let's look at what this instance is. These instances are referred to as class instances class objects, instance objects, or simply objects, okay? So what we're going to call these dudes, this is an object now. RECT1 is an object because it is an instance of the rec class, which is simply a blueprint of data and methods that are work together, okay? So I come over here. A class defines constituent members which enable the these class instances to have state and behavior. Well, they do have a state uh, because there it is. That's a state. It does have behavior because I can change these values uh, of of the uh, as I did here. I change this object now, this instance of that class, uh, the color to green. The default value for the color, as you see here, was blue. I can override these default values. Okay. Uh, data field members, member variables, or instance variables enables a class object to maintain a state, which is what it did here. This is green. It's going to stay green forever. That's the state. This is blue. It's going to stay that way. This is where it's located. This is its size and so on. That's the state. Okay. Other kinds of members, especially methods, enable the class object's behavior. So this did behave in a certain way because instead of it being blue, I made it green. Okay. Class instances are the type of the associated class. Now you say, what does that mean? Well, this is like a data type. In other words, this has an ID, a color, an X, a Y, a width, a height, and a draw. So the object is going to have the same kinds of things. So this is like setting a, date, a new data type in a sense. It's really not a data type, but this copies uh, what the class, the class had. Okay, so that's what a class is. It's not something you take in school. Encapsulation. Let's look at encapsulation right here. A language construct that facilitates the bundling of data with the methods or other functions operating on data. Now, encapsulation, by default, when you create a class, it's encapsulated. In other words, what I did is I bundled the data. Uh, where is it? Right here. I bundled the data, this right here, with another function, this right here. And the way I did that was with this line right here. I used the same identifier, draw, draw, that the function used as its identifier and I did it without the parentheses. So that's what encapsulation is. Let's now look at abstraction. Abstraction in computer science, um, abstraction is the process by which data and programs are defined with a representation similar to its meaning while hiding away the implementation details. Abstraction tries to reduce and factor out details so that the programmer can f focus on a few concepts at a time. And that, by, by default, when you do OOP, you're doing it primarily for the reason of abstraction. I'm hiding from the programmer all this stuff down here. And in a sense, I guess, the part of this stuff up here. So now all the programmer has to do is do this nice, clean, simple code here. So what I've done for the programmer is I've used abstractions. I, I made it so that the programmer doesn't have to know the details of what's in there. Now, if they want to know it, that's fine. They can, but they don't have to. 
Methods. Let's look at methods. Uh, let me bring this in here so you can see it. Method. What's a method? In object-oriented programming, a method is a subroutine that is exclusively associated either with a class, in which cl case is called a class method or a static method, or with an object, in which case it is called an instance method. Okay, so uh, if I look at a method, here's my method right here. My method does, does something. So right now it's a class method because it's associated with class. When I use that method over here, here I use this the method right here. It's now an object method. Okay. All right. So, uh, like a subroutine in procedural programming language, a method usually consists of a sequence of programming statements to perform an action, or a set of input parameters to customize these actions, and possibly an output value called a return value. So, it, it it usually consists of a sequence of code to do something. And that's exactly what this method here does. It consists of a sequence of code in order for something to happen. Okay? All right, so that's the, the boring part. Well, I hope you found it somewhat interesting. Uh, and going through the definitions of what object-oriented programming is. And uh, methods provide a mechanism for accessing and manipulating the encapsulated data stored in an object. So all this data whoops, all this data right here has been encapsulated, and this method is a way of accessing this stored data. Because if you look right here, you see this ID, and where is this ID? It's right up here. Okay, you see this ID down here? That's right up here. And it's defined as C1, but of course we can override it. Now in our next video, we're going to go through some very, very simplified examples of using object-oriented programming in JavaScript. As a matter of fact, the next several videos will be some very, very uh, detailed stuff on using objects in JavaScript. Because if you know how to do this, uh, you can really create some very, very powerful code. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.